Today, I'm building the fireplace mantle. If you watched the last video, you saw me build a custom staircase and handrail. The client liked the mule post so much that they wanted me to build them a fireplace mantle in the same style. I started out ripping the styles roughly to width along with the sides of the mantles as well as the inner panels and sent them through the planer and planed them down to the various thicknesses I needed. I am mitering the sides of the mantle to the front styles. Before cutting these pieces I spent some time selecting the parts of the boards that had similar grain patterns and coloring so when I put the miters together it would look like it came from one piece of wood. Unless you really inspected it you would never know that they were mitered together. I used blue tape to tape the parts together as a hinge so I could fold it into place after spreading the glue. I did not tape the full length. I left a space every few inches so I could see the point of the miter to ensure that it was staying in place and closing up tight. Once I spread the glue and folded it up, I used some more tape to keep it folded and in place while the glue dries. When I originally cut the stock for the miters, I left it a little long just in case one of them got out of square or I screwed up the miter somehow. Now that the component is assembled, I ripped the style to its final width as well as the sides of the mantle. I also left them a little long so when I glued up the miters I could slide the parts back and forth to try to match the grain. Now that it's assembled, I squared one end on each piece and then set up a stop block to ensure they would all end up the same length when cutting off the final piece. All that was left to do for the main structure of the legs is to cut the rails to width and length and assemble them to the styles. To join all the pieces together, I used the smallest domino I could find. If you don't have a domino and are looking to build a similar fireplace mantle, there's no reason why you couldn't use a biscuit joiner for this, or even a mortise and tenon. However, the stock is about 3 eighths of an inch thick for the reveal, so it would be a pretty small mortise and tenon to cut. To make it a little less awkward on the long skinny piece, I clamped it in my vise to hold it in place while I cut the mortises. To make it a little safer to cut the mortises on the little rail pieces, I just use one against the back of the other to add some additional stability while I cut the mortises. Since I'm gluing ingrain to long grain, I made sure I spread the glue on the domino as well as in the mortise to ensure I wouldn't have any joints fail. For the header piece, the build operation was much of the same as for the sides of the mantle. I jointed a straight edge to go against the fence of the table saw and then ripped a miter down the length. Then the glue up was much of the same as before. A little blue tape to hold the miter together as the glue dried. I added some plywood cleats to the leg so I'd have something to nail the header to. Then I did a mock-up so I could take some exact measurements for the filler strip that the cove molding would be attached to. I didn't shoot video of making the filler strip, but you'll see it installed later on. Basically, it is a 3-inch board with the mitered returns that return back to the wall. 
Now it was time to make the cove. I just routed the tip of the board so I could get the profile. Then at the table saw, I used the data blade to remove the bulk of the material. This reduces the load on the router, so in the long run it will save time. It also reduces the chance of blowing out big chunks of wood while routing. I ended up doing a horizontal pass and a vertical pass to remove most of the waste. A lighter pass at the router typically produces a cleaner cut, and since it is safer to route a bigger piece with less chatter than a small piece, I used a wider board than I needed and then routed a profile on each side. Then back at the table saw I cut the cove free. I changed out the router bit to a roundover bit and used the same process to cut some quarter round to go around the base of the legs. Be sure to have your push stick ready. Now for the top shelf, which is the final piece I needed to make before staining and installing. I used the same nosing bit as the stairs to create the bull nose on the shelf. I started out by cutting the profile on the end of a board to help me find the right angle to set the blade to reduce the bulk of the material just as before. Then it was just ripping off the excess and routing the profile. The final step was to miter the nosing and install it around the shelf. Now out at the job site the plan is to attach those plywood cleats to the wall to give me something to nail the legs to. I'm just putting them in place inside the legs to help me find where they need to be when located on the wall. I left the inner panels out of the legs so I could reach through with my drill to mark the exact location and drill holes for some mollies to attach the cleats to the wall. Once I had the cleats attached to the wall, I pulled the legs off and attached the inner panels by nailing them in place from the inside of the leg. Then I put them back on the cleats, but before nailing them in place, I installed the header to be sure I had a tight fit between the legs and the header. The next piece is the filler strip, and this piece is just to create a little reveal and some place for the cove molding to be attached to. Then I put the top shelf on and took a few minutes to be sure it was centered. I attached it by nailing it from the bottom to hide as many nail holes as I could. Now I'm down to the final trim. I started on one end and worked my way across installing the cove. For the final trim, I used my headless pin nailer so there's no holes to putty. And the final detail on the leg, a little bit of quarter round. Here's the finished mantle, a nice design that goes perfectly with the staircase null post.